Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adams Memorial Library's Marching Choir Within program. I'm Miss Karen. Thank you very much for joining us for Marches and Choir Within. So here in Latrobe, every march we love, love, love to celebrate Mr. Rogers, forever Latrobe's neighbor. So usually we talk about um, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood or Daniel Tiger's neighborhood. But this year, in addition to those, because we'll never forget, forget our neighborhoods, we also are going to be talking about some other PBS kid shows that would not exist if it weren't for Fred Rogers. Because these shows were created by Fred Rogers Productions. Fred Rogers Productions is a company that continues to do new television series that have the same values that Mr. Rogers had, the ones he shared with us, with me when I was little, on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So some of these shows include um, Don Quixote, Peg Plus Cat, Alma's Way, and Odd Squad. And the kids for March include activities from all of those besides Daniel's and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhoods. So you can come in and pick up the kit in the children's room of the library, or you can call us to reserve some and we'll hold them for you and then you can come in and get them or you can pick them up through curbside service. So I'm gonna be showing you the activities from Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. And then Mr. Alex will be here to show you, share the activities from the other shows with you. This first activity is our tribute to Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. And there isn't actually a handout in the kit for this one. What you will find is a piece of paperboard. It's a little heavier and a paper with some Mr. Rogers quotes on it. Mr. Rogers said so many wonderful and inspirational things. Look, I even have a mug with different things that Mr. Rogers said, like, won't you be my neighbor? So what we thought we would do is let you make your own Mr. Rogers inspiration board. So if you have another quote that you would like that's a favorite of yours, like, won't you be my neighbor? You can write that on your board, or you can use one of the ones that we have here, like I did. This is one of my favorite quotes from Mr. Rogers. You can grow ideas in the garden of your mind. So either way, this is easy peasy, and the inspiration comes from you. You can either write your own quote that you know, or you can choose one of these ones, cut it out, glue it on, and then decorate that way. So you can color and then you can draw whatever you would like around it. Then you can use this to hang it up and be your own inspiration, or you can always share it with someone special. This activity comes from Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and it's a feel better jar, or in our case, a feel better cup. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes if I'm feeling bad, when I'm really feeling sad or bad, sometimes I can't even think of what will make me feel better. But during a time that I am feeling better, that's when I can come up with it, good ideas. So the Feel Better Jar is a collection of activities that you can do that when you're having a bad day, you can try them and they'll make you feel better. So in the kit, there will be a cup and some orange paper for decorating, orange like Daniel Tiger. Some popsicle sticks that will be in the bag like this. And a little piece of poster board. These will all be different colors. I used yellow. This one was blue. Those are all for decorating your cup and then writing down your feel-good activities, feel-better activities. So for this one, I decorated with some orange paper. I cut some off and made it say, feel better jar drew a flower, some things that I know would cheer me up. And then I wrote some things that I know I would like to do on the popsicle sticks, something like bake some cookies. There's an activity that cheers me up. So I did write them on the popsicle sticks, but I thought it was a little tricky. You have to write very, very small if you're writing on the popsicle sticks. So then I wrote them again on pieces of paper like this. So here's another thing that I know will make me feel better. Talk to a friend. So that's what these are for. So the next time I'm having a bad day, I will just grab one of these and think, oh, read a happy book. That'll cheer me up. So friends, of course, I hope you don't have too many bad days. But if you do, maybe you can use your feel better jar 
to feel better. Now, friends, I don't know if you noticed my bracelet. Not this one. This one. This is my thinking of you bracelet. And it's another activity that comes from Daniel Tiger's neighborhood. So there'll be a handout about that in your kit. And there will be a little bag with some beads in it and some different colored embroidery floss thread. So the thinking of you bracelet is something where you can make two. You can make one for yourself and then you can make another one to give to someone special to let them know you're thinking of them. So how you will do this is you pick three of the pieces of thread. There should be six in your kit. Choose three, whatever colors you like, and then tie the end, loop the end around a pencil and make a knot. So you're going to have a loop around the pencil. Then you slide it off, take that loop. The other parts will just be hanging down. You need to tape it down onto your table because you want to keep it still while you're working. And then you just start braiding the three threads together. Or if you want, you can just twist them together. So braid, braid, braid. And then if you feel like it, you can add beads on too. Some of the beads that are in your kit. Now, what I did was pick one color to put my beads on. So I used the white thread on my bracelet. And every so often when it got to the right side, I put a bead on. In order to do that, I had to put a piece of tape around the end and around the, so it would go through the bead better. So I had to put the tape on to make, it, make the thread a little bit more stiff. And then I kind of squeezed it so it would fit through the hole. And actually, sometimes I couldn't get it through. Some of the holes were a little bit smaller than others in the beads. So if you're not able to use the beads to decorate your bracelet, you can just save them and use them for another project. And also, as I was working, my thread started twisting up, so I had to keep taping it down so it would stay flat. So if that happens to you, just use more tape and keep taping it as you're working and as you're braiding. And keep going, keep working and braiding till the very end, and then tie a knot on the end so your bracelet doesn't come unbraided. Take the tape up, and then it's time to wear it. So put the bracelet around your wrist and put the loose end through the hole that you've made. If it's way too long, you might want to cut some parts of it, some, some of the end off, and then you might have to re-knot it to make sure it doesn't come unraveled. And then you can tie the end around the loop, and then you get to wear it, and then you get to make another bracelet and share it with somebody special, a friend, a loved one, or a neighbor to let them know you're thinking of them. Hi, friends. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mr. Alex. And something else that you might not know is that Fred Rogers Productions actually is behind a lot of our favorite PBS Kids shows, not just Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. So today I'm going to share what some of those other shows might be and a few activities that you can do in order to celebrate all of our PBS Kids friends. So the first show that we're going to talk about is Don Quixote. And we're going to make a really cool Don Quixote placemat. So, for each of our activities, we're going to go into our kit and get a very special set of instructions. And this one happens to look just like this. Then, we're also going to need a sheet of cardstock to use as our backing, a piece of scrapbooking paper to glue everything onto, and a few printouts of these mealtime placemat decorations and our Someplace Else Pals. So, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to take a pair of scissors and some glue, and we're going to cut out our someplace, someplace else pals and our mealtime sayings. Then we can take them, color them in, and glue them onto our piece of cardstock, just like I did here. Then we're going to take our crayons and we're going to decorate our scrapbooking paper and the rest of our cardstock with anything you'd like. One of the ideas in the instructions is to add a question that you could ask your family at mealtime. And I like their example of what was the silliest part of your day. So once you've got that all together, you've got a placemat that looks extra cool and is ready for your next meal. Now, if you've made your Don Quixote placemat and maybe had a good meal to go with it, then it's time to visit our next Fred Rogers Productions friend, Peg Plus Cat. Now, for this activity, we're going to go into our packet and we're going to get our instructions to make a peg paper doll chain. And in order to do that, we're going to get this printable here with our two pegs, as well as our scissors 
our glue, some yarn, some wiggle eyes, and our crayons. And what we're going to do first is we're going to cut out our pegs because this is going to be the start of our chain. Now, as you can see here, we've only given you two pegs to add to your chain, but you might want more. And if that's the case, then you can either photocopy these or draw your own peg drawings on a sheet of paper and cut those out as well. You can also draw a different PBS Kids friend if you want to add some variety to your chain. Then you're going to take your crayons and you're going to color in peg and any other characters that you have. And we definitely want to do this first because it is going to be really difficult to color around some of the embellishments that we're going to add. Once our characters are colored, then it's time to add our wiggle eyes and our yarn. So all I did was I glued on my wiggle eyes using my glue stick and I took my yarn and cut off pieces of it to add as Peg's hair. Now, as I mentioned, I just used my glue stick to hold these on and I did this after I colored it so that I wouldn't have to color around everything. Finally, I took my glue stick and I connected my two pegs uh, by their hands using my glue stick and this is the start of my chain. I can definitely build upon it later or I can hang it up around the house and decorate with it. Alrighty, friends. If you're still feeling creative after making our Peg Plus Cat chain, then it's time to get out those instructions to visit our next Fred Rogers Productions friend, Alma from Alma's Way. And we're gonna get the instructions to paint the view from our window. Now in Alma's Way, Alma and Andre, they paint a mural. And we're gonna do something that's a little bit similar. We're actually, as the instructions say, going to paint the view from our window. And in order to do that, we're going to get our watercolor paper out as well as our watercolor set and grab a pencil from home. So what I did to make my scene is I went upstairs in the library and I looked out the window where our library lions are and I drew what I saw. Now you can draw exactly what you see outside or you can make some changes. But once you have a scene like this, it's time for the fun part. We're going to use our watercolor set to add some color. So a few tips that I have is that I drew my sketch in pencil and that allowed me to paint right over it using my watercolors. As the name implies, watercolors need some water. Now, you don't want too much water, you don't want to turn your paper into a soggy mess, but you don't want too little water either. Because the more water you have, the easier your paint will spread, but the lighter it will be. And the less water you have, the harder it will be to spread your paint, but the darker your colors will be. And so you can sort of use that to your advantage and paint your scene the way that you want. This is what my view from my window uh, here at the library looks like, but your view is obviously going to look a little bit different and a lot more like your neighborhood. So start sketching and you'll have a masterpiece worth hanging on your fridge or anywhere else at home. Alrighty friends, it's time to visit our final Fred Rogers Productions friends and that is the Odd Squad. So while we've done plenty of things today, we've made bracelets, we've made cups to give us ideas on things we can do to feel better. We've made peg chains, painted our view of our neighborhood, all sorts of different things, placemats, you name it. But we're going to get a little mathematical and make our very own circle art just like this. Now, in order to create our own geometric circle art, you guessed it, we're gonna go into our packet and we're gonna get those instructions on how to do so. We're also going to get another packet with templates that look just like this. And at the moment, our circle looks pretty blank, but we're gonna spruce that up a little bit by grabbing a ruler or another straight edge from home, just something that we can use to make a straight line, as well as some crayons or markers that we can use to color in our project. So in order to turn this blank circle into some awesome circle art, we're going to take our ruler or our straight edge, and we're just going to start connecting the dots on our sheet. So for instance, we can connect this dot here to this dot here, just like that, and draw a line. But you don't have to connect the dots in this way. You can connect any two dots on your sheet, however you like, whether it be up and down, side to side, whichever direction you like. But when you've connected them, it's going to create some shapes. And you can find those shapes and take your crayons, your markers, your colored pencils, and color them in. So when I did that with my blank circle, I got something that looked like this. And I really like mine because I didn't try to make a perfect pattern that repeated over and over. I just sort of drew some lines at random and had fun finding the shapes within. But if this seems a little bit challenging or you do want a repeating pattern, then there are two other sheets in your packet that have pre-printed designs like this one that you can just color in. 
So I had lots of fun uh, making my own pattern and coloring in this sheet as well. No matter what you do, you're going to create some great geometric circle art and have a lot of fun. Well, friends, unfortunately, after all of those activities, our time together has come to a close. But if you enjoyed what we did here today, then you can go into your packet for two final activities to do on your own at home. The first activity is this one here uh, called Make a Silly Folded Picture, and the instructions will tell you all about how you can do that, as well as another odd squad activity, this time featuring tangrams, where you'll use these shapes here and cut them out to make a variety of different patterns. But most importantly, I'd like to thank our friends at WQED Education and Clearview Federal Credit Union for all of their help with this awesome program, because without them, it wouldn't be possible. And be sure to show us how all of your projects turned out by sending pictures on over to us at kids at adamslip.org. Finally, you'll want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for updates not only about Inquire Within, but everything else that we're doing here at the library. And as always, happy crafting, everybody.